Hello everyone, my name is Chris, and before this episode begins, I wanted to do some brief housekeeping notes. First, I wanted to thank Nick for including my story about the haunted house in episode 160 of the Paranormal Mysteries podcast. It was a big honor, and I'll surely be submitting more experiences in the future. Additionally, I want to welcome my new listeners and say thank you guys so very much for dropping by and tuning in, and I would love to direct you to my website, lincolnslegion.com, listed down below. To get to know me, um, I'm a published author on Amazon, and I, I'm also a Twitch streamer and general content creator with multiple channels on YouTube. Everything I do can be found on the website listed down below in the show notes, as I said, and I really hope to see you guys uh, spread across all my different social medias. And that being said, let's just jump right into today's story. Retail Residual As far as hauntings go, this particular encounter was mild, though strikingly uncomfortable in the moment. I recently moved to a small, rundown town in Michigan with my now ex-girlfriend. Jobs were sparse and the pay was awful, but I ended up working in the local Dollar General to survive. I had no preconceived notions going in for my first shift that this building would house anything paranormal. It never entered my thoughts. I remember the feeling clearly, though, something new and expanding in the tight space of the employee bathroom. I was dipping into the second third of my shift at work, taking a break from the monotony of callous Michiganders and their holier-than-thou attitude towards minimum wage employees, the irony of their posturing ever apparent with the passing summer days. A break in the population left the store empty for a short time, and my patience dangerously low. I had headphones in, likely listening to some Japanese metal like Dirt and Grey or Maximum the Hormone at the time, and I didn't even need to pee, so I didn't bother locking the door or even closing it tight, I just allowed it to close behind me as I entered and positioned myself in front of the mirror. I just needed space to breathe. Humidity had infiltrated the store at this point, and seeing how the restroom had no fan or air conditioner, I found no relief. I paused in the tight space, music blaring and eyes wandering to my own reflection. I stood for only a minute or so when I felt a drastic change in temperature. I didn't consider it any more than a chill through my body until I felt the physical touch of cold run up and down my arms. Bemused, I looked into my own eyes through the reflection, and that's when I felt a tug on the back of my shirt. Now I knew my lanyard was in my right pocket, so the immediate thought was, oh, it got snagged on something. That was thrown out the window when I factored in that I had been standing idle for that minute or so since I entered, and the grip I felt tugged on the right side of my lower back. The ball, the fabric of my loose shirt clearly distinguished and pictured in my mind from the physical touch. I turned, thinking that just maybe the assistant manager reached through the slightly open door and pulled at my shirt as a joke, but... Of course, the door was only open a crack, and she was nowhere to be seen. Working with her for the short period that I had, I never got the indication that she was a physical joker, you know, aside from the occasional sarcasm we shared and general laughs at each other's stories, there was never any kind of physical interaction like that, so that just didn't make any sense. So I left the bathroom and didn't say anything about it, keeping in the back of my mind. I believe the next day I was working with a different manager a key holder who had been there much longer than either me or the other assistant manager. I asked him as a joke mid-shift if this place was haunted, not really expecting a serious response, but, but as of now, the idea of that icy feeling permeated in my head overnight, and I had a few questions I wanted satiated. He had an answer pretty quick, uh, pretty far from what I expected him to say. He said weird things do happen. Then he added there might be a ghost of a little girl, which I found to be specifically odd, considering this is, again, some dumpy dollar general in some shithole town in the palm of Michigan. And why so specific with a little girl? So that got me thinking of what his experiences would be, but I never asked him. Why would a child haunt this place, though? That was the main thing in my mind, which immediately resonated in my head from watching years of ghost adventures and just knowing a thing or two about paranormal experiences and the supernatural that demons like to mimic children. It should be known that I only had been working there for a few months at that point. Soon after this interaction, maybe a couple of weeks or so, I was in the back room going over stock and figuring out what roll tainers I wanted to pull out to stock which aisles I had access to within range of the register that I also needed to keep an eye on. Summer had begun fading away, and business slowed to its moderate pace, giving us more ample time to do menial tasks such as stalking instead of ringing people up. 
Now, I don't know about yours, but this Dollar General sold balloons, which I think most others do, but in case yours doesn't, it's important to know that mine does. Anyway, we kept the balloon count in check and ensured not to have any deflating balloons dipping to the floor or any strays escape the ceiling cage. And again, if you don't know what the ceiling cage is, it's just, it looks like a fat shopping cart nailed to the ceiling where the balloons would float up to and be contained in. So we didn't have to chase balloons around the store because sometimes the ceiling can be pretty tall in various Dollar Generals, so getting the balloons down was near impossible without a BB gun. It was almost ritualistic for me and the assistant manager to watch the stock of inflatable balloons, make sure it was constantly filled, and make sure none of the balloons were dipping, and if they were, to refill the air, because it was just a problem if the balloons were at knee height bouncing around being kicked by children. When I entered the back room for the tenth time that night, I got this unexplainable feeling. One I hadn't gotten the entire time I worked there, and even after the bathroom incident, this was entirely foreign to me. The entrance to the back room was behind me, and I was looking at all the rotators, like I said, contemplating what, where I would start. After I got that feeling, I turned to face the double doors when I saw a single balloon. I can't remember if it was blue or green, maybe red, but I do remember that it was perfectly inflated, bulbous, smooth, and not dipping in any way. The long silver string coiled to the floor. It was floating at exactly chest height to me. Now I'm about five foot eight. And like I said, the balloons, when fully inflated as this one was, would shoot straight to the ceiling. I glared at it, not really knowing how to process what I was seeing because it wasn't exactly a paranormal event at a glance. And that, that's not an idea that registered in my head when I saw it. It was just odd. It was... When the balloon suddenly released and floated to the ceiling unprovoked and without warning that I understood. The balloon was being held by the string by something the height of a child. I said some comforting words to the assumed spirit, not wanting to antagonize or disrespect whatever entity was here, knowing full well that it very well could be some type, some type of demon or fiend. That feeling didn't last, and I never thought it was in any danger, so I simply went on with my shift. Again, not usually dissuaded by paranormal events, I kind of take them in stride and just kind of go about my business, but I kept that memory fresh and didn't allow it to hinder my work. The last thing that happened to me before I left this job was a closing shift. It was a brief final encounter, but definitely the spookiest and easily the most threatened I had felt. Now, Dollar General lights are on a timer for most locations, so when the store closed at, say, 10 p.m., as ours did, the lights would automatically shut off at 10.15, leaving only a few of the interior strips on. I was sweeping down the aisles with the push broom, making two streak lines up and down to collect a pile by the counter, and things were deathly silent around me. The occasional clatter of change and quarters and nickels from the office that the manager sat in counting the end shift tills. I had no music in today because my iPod had died roughly an hour before the end of my shift. So it was just me in the thin silence. The lights went off as they were expected to and apart from the one strip directly down the middle of the building, I was left in utter darkness. I pushed dirt along and I found myself at the furthest point from the office where the manager sat counting the tills as I said. Isolated, I suddenly heard a sort of skittering noise, like, like a handful of bony fingers was cast to the cheap tile floor like dice, but almost intentional in a way. It wasn't a random scattering of bones, it was one by one in sequence. I, I can't explain the sound, but that's the general resonance of it. It caught my attention, obviously, and I stopped, raising my head and looking around myself only to see the detergents and whatever else was around me at the time. What followed was a shadow in the corner of my eye, on the ceiling, darting down an aisle three away from me. Intrigued and honestly a bit frightened at this point, I leaned the broom against the closest wall and carefully exited my own lane, finding the junction and bypassing the aisles between. Peering down where I saw the shadow, I found nothing, but then, as if, as if mocking me, the same skitter noise echoed as nothing more than a whisper from exactly where I had just come from, 
but this time, the noise moved along the ceiling, just like the shadow I had seen. I decided I wanted nothing more to do with it at that point. I left the broom where it was, and I moved to wait by the front doors to leave. Just sitting at the counter, listening, eyes drawn to that half of the building where darkness fell, watching for anything blacker than black to move on top of the shadows and the, and the contrasted light. I didn't see anything, and I, I don't recall hearing anything else, but... Though I leaned against the counter with my arms crossed and my heart pounding, my face was stagnant, and I tried to clear my mind of any kind of negative thoughts as not to feed whatever this was. I knew it had grown accustomed to me. I knew it liked me. But I was let go from that job because of a five dollar short in my nightly till. Otherwise, I would have stayed there and prodded whatever it was for more activity when I had more confidence. But that's the end of retail residual. <laughs>